Welcome to week four and your lecture on water and wastes. So here are some quick facts. The average person uses 14 gallons of water per day for washing clothes and dishes, 21 gallons per day for bathing, and 32 gallons to flush the toilet. Of the Earth's water supply, 99% of it is either salt water or frozen, meaning we can only use 1% of what is left on Earth. The path that water takes to travel through its various states, from vapor to liquid to solid, as it moves through the ocean, atmosphere, and ground, is called the hydrologic cycle. Here's a, oh, Jacksonville's, um, the Jacksonville area averages about 52 inches of rain per year, or precipitation per year. Now here's an image of the hydrologic cycle. You can see that the, um, the water rains down on Earth, travels to streams and rivers and oceans and things, evaporates into the atmosphere, and then it goes through the whole process again. Transpiration, where you see here, is the evaporation of water from plants. So this is a little sidestep in the process. Sometimes the rain is absorbed by the plants and then they essentially sweat it out back into the atmosphere. Now precipitation is the most accessible source of water, but groundwater makes up the most or the majority of our water supply. Now rainwater is the purest form of natural water and about 95 percent of it is good enough quality to provide all of our indoor residential water requirements. Early societies depended more on rainwater than we do today with the advent of centralized water treatment plants. Uh, rainwater collection really has become less common but now many with sustainable technology many subdivisions are being designed so that they can make use of rainwater for irrigation, uh, rainwater collection, that sort of thing. So here's an example of a rainwater collection system. Here the, the water is collected as it falls from the roof and then it's sent to this underground storage vessel. Now um, acid rain or rain that has chemicals or air pollution can be an issue, also can you know, bird droppings and dust and things that um, hit that may be landing on your roof. So the steeper the roof, typically the more clean the water is going to be. And then usually rainwater will be used for things like irrigation, to flush the toilet, but it's not very typically used to drink unless you have a pretty strong treatment system. Tank Town is a company based in Dripping Springs, Texas who has installed hundreds of rainwater systems locally and even produces its own bottled water from, from the rain that, that they call cloud juice. The water passes through a filter and then under an ultraviolet light so that it can be purified. And um, to simplify the maintenance, Tank Town actually keeps their filters above ground, concealed in buildings, as opposed to being underground. That way they can access them easier and sometimes also behind landscaped walls so that they kind of blend into the atmosphere. So this entire system lets clients enjoy pure, clean water while conserving the natural resources and avoiding a, a big city water bill. The world's water uses has dramatically increased over time. We've gone from using about 10% of the supply in 1950 to 50% 50 in 1980, and we, I can only imagine where we are today. The increasing population and consumption puts pressure on the clean water supply and then thus threatens world health and political stability. In addition to, uh, to per person use of water, agriculture and industry use vast amounts. As a matter of fact, some people say that agriculture uses about 85% of the Earth's fresh water supply. Designers must pay attention and disregard extravagant landscape designs, water features, golf courses and swimming pools that have an inappropriate use of the water supply, especially if you're designing things in the desert or places where there's a limited amount of water. Now, potable water is the water that's safe to drink and cook with. It's free from any harmful bacteria and is carried from the public supply directly to homes and businesses in large underground water mains or pipes. Hard water are, is water that has calcium salts and can cause scaling and basically a buildup of these minerals on pipes. Uh, it makes soap scummy in, in the shower. So water softeners are often used to remove the calcium and magnesium salts um, by sort of an ion exchange system. 
The availability of clean water determines where people and businesses can be located and how many people can live in an area. Some places like Phoenix, Arizona have a limited water supply. So you can only, you can only give so many people water before you begin to run out. Now the city water supply um, consists of various elements. Uh, first being the water main. The water main is basically a large pipe that carries the potable water from the municipal storage supply area to the buildings, whether they're commercial or residential. The service pipe is the pipe that's installed by the city or by the um, water utility and runs from the big water main to the building. Now the water meter is the part that measures the amount of water that is taken in by the building from the service pipe. And this can also measure um, sewage disposal as well. There are two control valves. Uh, here's, a, here's a better example of the water meter here. You can see an image of that. And so the city can take this cover off and, and kind of see how much you've been, you've been using. Now, there's two control valves, as I mentioned. One is used for shutting off the building's water supply at the building, and the other is accessible only by the city. So uh, I used to, when I would leave for vacation in Arizona, I used to turn off my, my water. And that, that control valve is usually found here. You might have a, a water spigot that you hook a hose up to, and then there's another valve. That would be your, your individual shutoff valve for your specific house. Then there's another control valve that's located here um, out in the street and this is the one where the city can come turn off your water if you haven't been paying your bill. The city's water is kept under pressure so that it can be delivered to buildings offsetting friction and gravity. Once the water is inside the building the pressure is changed by the size of the pipe so it goes through the bigger pipe to this when it goes through the bigger pipe to the smaller pipe there's more pressure and that basically allows the water to, to defy gravity. Now, if the pressure is too high, then some pressure reducers and regulators can be installed on the fixture. Um, that's why when you turn your water on, it kind of shoots out. That's that pressure. Now, the, this water pressure that's supplied by the city can only reach up to six stories. Buildings with more than six stories need to have a water supply tank on the roof, and so then gravity is used to distribute the water through the building. Here's an example of an old roof water uh, supply tank in, um, in a big city. Wells should be dug deep enough to help ensure water quality. Here you can see that like this house has a septic tank. So there's this septic tank here. It uses this ground to, um, to, to drain it and to keep it clean. The fresh water needs to be really deep in the ground so that by the time anything gets down here, it's been purified by the rocks and the ground um, in between. So then uh, once the well is dug, a pump will be used to bring the water from the well to typically a storage tank. And then it can be used in the, um, in the residence as it's needed. Well water is definitely more reliable than rainwater storage. And typically it's cleaner. For indoor plumbing to be safe, it's necessary to separate the water supply from the waste. So we have two separate systems. We have the water supply system, which brings the clean potable water into the building. And then we have the drain, waste, and vent system, which removes the waste from the building. This sometimes is also called the sanitary system. And then it sends this, this waste to the sewer below. In wood frame construction, the plumbing is located either in um, a floor joist or in wall construction spaces. So here you can see before the drywall is applied, uh, various drain waste and vent pipes or water supply pipes are included in the wall. For masonry buildings, th there's no space inside between the blocks. So you must fur out the wall. Basically that means you add wood studs to the wall to create an, a space in between the, the concrete and the, the wood to install the pipes. So there are two types of distribution. I mentioned before that the city water is pressurized and that it uses this pressure to feed itself into at least six stories of a building. That's called upfeed distribution. 
Now, when the building is taller than six stories and there needs to be a storage tank on the top, uh, this is called pumped up feed distribution. So you actually may install a pump. Sometimes when a, a toilet is installed, let's say on in the basement floor where it's below the city's water main, you may also have to use a pump in that situation. There are various types of pipes. Uh, they can be made from copper, red brass, galvanized steel, and plastic. Now, steel pipes are strong and inexpensive, but they can corrode and spring leaks. They only last about 20 to 50 years. Red brass are the most expensive types of pipe, and very good, but they're very good with corrosion resistance. Copper pipes have very good corrosion resistance, and they're twice as, as expensive as steel, but they're easier to assemble and they last twice as long. These are joined with a, a, a solder rather than being threaded, having threaded connections, so they actually become one pipe. This eases installation. It also allows the pipes to be thinner because no threads have to be built into the thickness and offers then um, less friction. Plastic pipes have a very low cost. They're obviously corrosion resistant and they're easier to work with. They can be flexible to where they can bend easily or strong and rigid and they work both indoors and out. The um, ABS black and PVC gray and white plastic pipes can be molded under heat, which makes them very versatile, but really only good for cold water use. So if you have really hot water in these pipes, then the pipes start to fail. The um, cream colored pipes can be used for hot or cold water, and they're less susceptible to freezing. Plastic pipes require more maintenance access, and if they're going to be used for potable water, drinking water, they have to be approved by the National Sanitation Foundation. Now pipe sizes are determined by the engineer due to the rate at which they will transport the water. So knowing how much pressure the water needs to be under, the engineer will then determine how large or small the pipe should be. The interior designer should provide the engineer with the type and number of fixtures as soon as possible so he can then determine the pipe size. Cold water pipes should be insulated to prevent any condensation and to prevent heat from affecting them. Hot water, hot water pipes are insulated to prevent heat loss. They should never be closer to than six inches to each other so they don't exchange heat. And water pipes on the outside walls may freeze in cold climates, so you should avoid locating fixtures on exterior walls. Hot water pipes in commercial situations where you have an ADA sink that needs, where someone would need to wheel under with their legs, must be insulated to prevent burning. Roughing in is the process of getting all the pipes installed, capped, and pressure tested before the fixtures are installed. The rough and dimensions for every fixture are available by the fixture manufacturer, and the interior designer should give these to the contractor or subcontractor as soon as possible. So this is an example of a, a rough-end uh, sheet from Kohler. And as soon as you specify your plumbing fixtures, you can print these out and just pass these on to your contractor. DHW, or domestic hot water, is used for bathing, washing clothes, and dishes, but not for heating spaces typically. Um, it's also then supplied by some type of water heater. Now here are the various temperatures required for hot water. Anything above 140 degrees can cause pretty serious burns, and codes will regulate water temps. This is not really something that you have to be too concerned about. These are the general uh, types of water heaters on the market. We'll kind of go over these here for, for a few minutes. A solar water heater raises the temperature of the water before it hits the water heater, so less energy is used, and it can cut the average heating, water heating bill by 40 to 60%. These are really typical of those water heaters I was mentioning um, on the roofs in all the houses in Greece. So, this is the solar panel, the water is stored here, and then it's fed to the hot water system when, when the tap is turned on. Okay, so I know I promised you one video that was 25 minutes long, but YouTube made me split it in half. So click on the next link in your eCompanion site for part two.